lovely people and welcome back to my channel. Do you know these types of products that are essential to your collection that you cannot like do your makeup without and yet you never really talk about them on camera because they're just not very exciting or for whatever reason you mention them once and then never again. These are the products that I want to talk to you about today because I use these products pretty much like I said on the daily and I've mentioned some of them here and there. Some of them are going to be more familiar to you than others but I just felt like I want to make a special video talking about them because some of them really deserve to be shouted out from the rooftops. The product that I want to mention as first and the one that I have been using for the longest and it has been you know an irreplaceable staple for me for the longest time is uh, a product that some of you might have heard me mention before but I want to mention it again because it is so good. It is the Skin Food Salmon Dark Circles Concealer Cream. It is a mouthful for me to say, I'm so sorry. It looks like this, it is a Korean concealer, basically it comes in two shades, the number 01 and the number 02, and I use the number 01. Now, this concealer is pretty much the only concealer that I have used for the past five or six years. I have, I think I have banned two of these already. Some people go through conceal concealer type of products really quickly. I'm not one of these people. I use concealer very sparingly. Now, the reason I love this particular concealer so much, besides the color, it has this beautiful like peach tone to it, so it tends to counteract very well like darkness under your eyes. The main reason that I love this concealer so much is because of its very emollient texture. It's very greasy and oily and I know a lot of you are going to be very turned off by these adjectives but that is the reason I love this concealer so much. My under eyes are dry, drier than the Sahara Desert and whatever other concealer I put there always tends to just suck out all the moisture out of my uh, under eyes and my under eyes just tend to look 10 years older as soon as I put another concealer from another brand and I've tried many. The next product I want to talk about, I'm just going to show you one of the products but what I really mean is the whole category and these are the lip liners, like the super basic lip liners from Essence that come in this packaging that you have to sharpen yourself. These are the only lip liners that I ever use. I go through these, I repurchase them and I've never felt the need for anything more expensive. In fact, I have one MAC lip liner because it was in a color that I couldn't really find in the drugstore and I didn't really feel like that MAC concealer elevated my experience in lip liners enough for me to think that oh, from now on I'm only going to use high-end high lip liners. On the contrary, I felt like I'm just fine with my Essence lip liners. These are really, really nice. They are not super soft and super creamy to the point where they're going to smudge too much but they're also not really hard so that you have to tug on your lips and they're so inexpensive. These are under one euro. The next product I want to mention and I want to like shout it out from the rooftops is how much I love the MAC Prep and Prime Lip Primer. It looks like this. It's in a stick form. It doesn't really have any color to it. It has a bit of like a waxy sort of silicone texture to it when you apply it on your lips. I love this thing. I use it every single day when I do my makeup and especially when I'm going to wear something which is um, A, not very long wearing or B, tends to bleed into my lip lines. I do wear it with all of my lipsticks as a base now because it just extends the life of all of my lipsticks, honestly. When I go to work, I go to work let's say around 9, I don't check my lipstick until lunchtime, then after, my, after I have lunch I normally... Um, blot just the tiniest bit and I still have lipstick on by the way, it's not like the lipstick is off. The lipstick stays on and I just slightly reapply it, that's it, until the end of the day. One of my favorite lipstick formulas, like cream lipstick formulas, are the H&M cream lipsticks. If I don't apply the lip primer, these tend to bleed a little bit around my lip lines over the course of the day and that's not a pretty sight, you don't want, to, you don't want that to happen, it's really uncomfortable. But when I apply this, the lipstick just pretty much stays where it should and it stays longer because also the cream lipsticks from H&M, while I love the formula, they're not super long lasting and this definitely helps to extend their life. Okay, this next product is a bit of a cheat because you hear me talk about this pretty much every time I do a tutorial or I talk about how I have achieved a certain look in the Project 5 Wears videos. But I want to talk about it again because it's one of my absolute staples already for at least 5 years. This is the 
Firini glitter glue which is called Pixie Epoxy. If you guys don't know, Firini is an indie brand, it is situated in the US and the owner is a cosmetic chemist. And the guy really knows what he's doing and this has been one of the OG products of the indie makeup world. It has been around for a really long time and it has been a cult favorite for good reason. It is one of the best glitter glues and one of the most inexpensive glitter glues in my opinion. It only costs $7 if I'm not mistaken and this amount will last you for a really really long time because you need the tiniest amount in order to apply your metallic eyeshadow or glitter eyeshadow over top and it is honestly the best one in terms of keeping that sparkle, that duochrome flaky eyeshadow in place. The one that would normally like drip all over your eyes. If you put this underneath I guarantee it's not going to go anywhere. The only thing you need to be aware of with this product is that because of how tacky it is, it is a little bit more tricky to use and it's a little bit of a learning curve with it. Next I want to talk one of my favorite like brow product discoveries over the past few years and this has been the L'Oreal Brow Artist Plumper. This little thing is so good that I had completely at one point abolished using like pomades and uh, brow powders. All I ever wanted through my brows was this little mascara thing. So first, the first thing that I really love about this product is the wand on it. It is, It has just such a beautiful convenient shape for you to like brush through your brows. It doesn't deposit too much product, it doesn't dry out too fast, it's not uber pigmented to the point that you are going to feel like why am I putting this, I might as well just be putting powder where I can have more control. It's just one of those products that if you have somewhat fuller, bushier brows like I do and you just want to give them a bit more shape, a bit more thickness and a bit more definition, this is going to be your best friend. Just as a side note, a friend of mine had lent me her ABH like brow mascara thing, I don't know how they're called. Uh, I tried it out and it was okay but I found it much more stark on my brows compared to this. Next I want to talk about my favorite eyeshadow base. I have tried many and many an eyeshadow base over the years. Um, NYX, um, what's that German brand called? Art Deco, I have tried eye primers for Urban Decay, I've tried eye primers from Zoeva and honestly nothing really compares to this eyeshadow primer from MAC. It's their 24 hour extend eye base. In terms of the texture, how quickly it dries down so you can apply your eyeshadow. It's not too tacky so it doesn't really make uh, matte eyeshadows stick weirdly to some places on your eye. It's just beautiful. Not to mention that my eyeshadows always last a good 10 hours even more if I decide to wear them for a longer time. So I really love this eyeshadow primer. It's ju just such a basic for me and I've been repurchasing it already for a couple of years. I finished everything else that I had in terms of eyeshadow primers and now I just stick with this one. It's not the cheapest eyeshadow primer on the market but you can get it on sale and honestly this lasts me at least a year. And you guys know I do my makeup quite often so for an eyeshadow primer to last me a year you can imagine how much product there is in here. Yes you're paying for it but it's a good amount of product. I highly recommend this eyeshadow primer if you're struggling with finding the right texture or something that will keep your eyeshadows in place for a good amount of time. My camera overheated a little bit so I took a little break. We went out uh, with Nicola to the playground. It was super windy so possibly my hair looks like she's crazy. She always looks like she's crazy but probably now she looks even more crazy. Anyway, for whatever reason I tend to use this product more off camera than I do on camera. You have seen me use it on camera. Anyway, the product that I'm talking about is Duraline from Inglot. It's the mixing medium from Inglot and it is one of my staple products. It has been one of my staple products already for years. So much so that the bottle that you see now is actually my new Inglot Duraline because I panned one of these completely. And trust me, Penning one of these is not easy unless you use it on a regular basis. Now, you can use it for a variety of things. You can um, revive gel liners that have dried out, brow pomades that have dried out, you can even add it to your liquid lipsticks to revive them a little bit. You can especially use this to create your own liquid liners from a variety of different loose eyeshadows if you happen to have those at your disposal of course. Um, 
I primarily use this with my Inglot gel liners because I have a few that I really love and Inglot gel liners without a doubt dry out within six months of you obtaining them. So if you're ever hoping to use up a gel, liner, a gel eyeliner from Inglot without Duraline, then you are... You, you're deceiving yourself, my friend. You need Duraline if you want to use gel liners from Inglot. I'm not saying that the gel liners are bad, I'm just saying that all cream products will eventually dry out. That's just their nature. The other thing I really love to use this for is my brow pomade from Anastasia Beverly Hills. Uh, once upon a time I used to use that brow pomade as an actual brow product. Now I mainly use it as a... Again, an eyeliner because it has the most perfect dark brown color. I don't believe this is a very expensive product and it is one that works very well. I have used mixing media from other brands, mostly indie brands, and this one remains my favorite. It's very gentle on the eyes, it never irritates my eyes whenever I use anything that I've foiled with it. So I highly recommend it if you're someone who likes to use gel liners or cream pot type of products that tend to dry out. Don't throw them away, give them a second chance, just get Duraline. This next product is another one that I may have mentioned on a couple of occasions but I want to once again give it a shout out because it is such an incredible product. This is the Kiko Extra Sculpt Mascara. Mine is not in the waterproof version because I don't tend to like waterproof mascaras much. They are way too difficult to uh, remove and this one stays fine even if you get rained on a little bit so I don't really find the need for a waterproof mascara. And also whenever you have a mascara and you have its waterproof counterpart they're not going to be the, the same mascara but in a waterproof versus non-waterproof version. The waterproof mascara is always going to have a different um, formula. First of all, this mascara has the most beautiful packaging I have ever seen on a mascara and let me tell you, this is like drugstore prices. This mascara costs, I do want to say something in the range of 8 euros when it's full price and I almost always buy it. This is a fantastic mascara, especially for those of you who tend to prefer drier type of formulas. I like my mascaras to be a little bit drier because I don't like mascaras which are too wet and clump all of your eyelashes together. So this mascara is perfect. It has a fairly big wand, I am going to be honest about that, and it also has this hourglass shape which makes it a little bit trickier sometimes if you want to get in the nukes and crannies of your eyelashes, eyeballs. I personally find it quite fine to work with. I never really struggle with reaching particular uh, places around my eyes when I want to apply the mascara and I just don't really know why people don't talk about this mascara. It's fantastic. It's the same quality as a lot of high-end, much more expensive mascaras. It is definitely the type of formula though that needs to age a little bit. So this mascara is like George Clooney it becomes better over time. So as soon as you open it, it's not going to be as spectacular as it will be within like two weeks after you have opened it. And another one of those staples that we are sort of used to but we never really talk about anymore is Fix Plus by MAC. Um, I know there are so many other types of products like this on the market but I'm so stuck to my Fix Plus because it just works. It works for foiling eyeshadow, it works for setting makeup and the thing I love Fix Plus for the most is the way it blends all the powders on my face. I will, I still remember the very first time I used this product and I just saw how all of my like especially like face powder products melted into each other and onto my skin and I was blown away. I still remember that day. And it always surprises me when people complain about powder products looking very powdery on their skin like a blush or a highlighter or things looking a little bit chunkier on their face and I'm like but the solution is so easy, just put a little bit of Fix Plus and you're good to go. My last staple is a makeup brush. A makeup brush that has become so integral to my makeup routine, that has nested so deeply into my heart and into my makeup habits that if I lost this brush, you'd better believe I'd be running towards my computer to buy a replacement. This is my... Uh, 
M brush in number 24. It is a fan highlighter brush. I've used a lot of different types of highlighter brushes and this one remains my favorite. Granted, it is my only like luxury highlighter type of brush. Maybe there are others which can compare to it. But honestly, even if I look online at other highlighter brushes from higher-end brands, I haven't seen that many which are exactly like this one. This is a very thin, very tapered... I'm not really sure you're gonna be able to see Sorry, it's a little bit dirty because I used it. Um, I'm not sure you're gonna be able to see that it's like a little bit tapered. So the bristles are actually already starting here to taper off. And it's super soft and the way it applies and blends products is absolutely impeccable. One of the advantages of this brush is that it works across different types of formulas. I'm able to pick up very dusty highlighters with it, very glittery highlighters with it, very smooth highlighters. Pretty much every formula that I've ever tried has worked out really well with this brush. If there is one brush that I highly recommend picking up from M brush, it will be this one. Guys, I completely forgot to mention these two products as products that I use on a regular basis and I can't live without. I kind of forgot about them because they permanently reside in my nightstand and not anywhere in my makeup units. So I only remembered last night that I forgot to include them in this video. So let's just quickly talk about them. This product has turned absolutely indispensable for me. This is the Laneige lip sleeping mask. Uh, Laneige is a Korean brand and I believe this product has been called for quite a while and it was introduced to me by a friend at work. She gave me a little sample to try at the time. My lips were really really dry and I tried the little sample. I was hooked. I bought it for myself and you can see I'm finally now reaching the point where I feel like I'm going to finally pen this product and mind you I use it religiously every single night before I go to bed. I smear copious amounts of this on my lips and I've been using this for two years. I think that I will probably pan it at the, the two-year mark because I bought this in May 2018. And I believe probably around May or June this year I'm finally going to pan this product. It is not inexpensive by any stretch of the imagination. This little pot costs, I want to say something in the range of 20 euros or at least that's how much I paid for it. But it has, you know, paid itself countless times in the meantime because I have used it for such a long time and it has been such a savior for my lips. I absolutely highly recommend it to anyone who struggles with chapped or dry lips. In those same lines, I want to mention the notoriously morbid Night Kiss Lip Balms. Now, I'm not sure these are still called the same because it's been a while since I've purchased one of these. Notoriously Morbid makes amazing lip balms. They come in the most delicious scents and they're just so pleasant to you know apply on your lips and especially during the day to maintain them this is a little bit more difficult because you have to go in with your finger and it's not super hygienic so this is much more convenient for during the day um, notoriously morbid lip balms are really inexpensive and they're such a great formula I highly highly recommend them those were my 10 staple products that I consider irreplaceable in my collection and even though I don't mention them very often, I still have deep appreciation for them and I would consider my makeup routine much more difficult if they were not at my disposal. I'm very curious to hear what your staple products are in your collection. Let's chat about it in the comment section below. Maybe we can learn from each other. As usual, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay strong in these hard times and I'll see you next time. Bye!